<laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Happy Friday. Welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, yes. Welcome to our Friends and Fiction official book club with Brenda and Lisa happy hour where we're going to do a little fall announcements. We'll have some cocktails and mocktails. We might have a giveaway. And we have a special guest joining us, not just Ron Block. He's he's not really a, a guest he's anymore. He's always he's special. Like, he's stuck <laughs> with us, but he is special. Whatever. Outside of Ron, we have a special guest joining us that you guys are going to be super excited about. So, And without I don't know who it is. <laughs> of course you don't know. It's a Ron well, surprise. <laughs> Let's get the party started. All right, let's. Cheers. 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 TGIF. Ooh, that <laughs> looks. <laughs> you can tell it's Friday. Wait, what? I missed it. <laughs> Ron, big old, his big old bottle of, of something. A, and a drink. Special. Of some, yeah. <laughs> of something. Maybe the, Maybe that should be our word. Oh, no, no. <laughs> What's so again, as, as Lisa said, we are very excited to be here tonight. And I will go ahead and share what I'm drinking. I'm I'm drinking a sort of a ginger tea with um with uh grenadine, so pomegranate flavored. I I've kind of grown to like that once I bought it the first time. <laughs> Yum. I am you, Lisa? being super simple tonight, and I'm drinking a nice full glass of sparkling rose. Oh, well, there you go. Who do you think rose you are? Christy Woodson Harvey? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. you, how about you, Ron? Well, are, are you ready? Bartender. Are you ready? We are ready. ready first, and this this can actually be a book recommendation because one of the things Ooh. Jeff and I did several years ago that we just loved was we loved before it closed down for repairs and, and updating the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York. They have this very famous bar in there called the it's called Peacock Alley. What we were there and found is that they had the Waldorf Astoria bar book. And so we had Very to make sure cool. that we got a copy of it. And we were originally going to go through and do a blog post. We make every drink in the book. But by the time we got to about the third one, we realized that some of these ingredients are from a long time ago and they're now poisonous. And some things are all now illegal <laughs> also. So we figured we better not go down that road. Better not go down that road. <laughs> But what kind of drink? <laughs> what kind of drink are you gonna tell us? I feel like this is a you know a, a, a pocket fairy drink. Or that's not. I didn't pick one of those. So that's so. Don't worry about that. Don't pick, worry about that. So tonight we are having <laughs> a South of the Border Martinez, and it's a, it's a class. It's a take on a classic gin drink that is gin and Luxardo cherry liqueur. And I make it a little bit differently because it's usually served in like a coupe glass. I love to serve it over ice. First thing that goes in is two ounces of reposado tequila. And this is Ooh. my favorite tequila. You can't buy it locally. I actually have recently went to Chicago to buy it at Binzi's, which is a store there. And it's made in the original place in Jalisco, Mexico. And it's a female owned business and women all work there and they share the profits and it's really famous and really great. So we have that. Then the next thing on that is sweet vermouth. It is one ounce of that. And then we go to the Luxardo <laughs> cherry liqueur, which we used I last really... month, if you remember. Oh, that's right. I really wish you oh, lived week. next door. You what? I really wish you lived next door. <laughs> well, we could arrange that. If I win the Mega Millions, you never know. And then just a quarter shot of the Luxardo. 
And then last but not least, and you know I love my bitters. Oh. Chocolate bitters. What? Yeah, chocolate bitters. Oh my God. Just a I have not of, heard of this. A little drops mm -hmm. of that. And you got my ice cube. That is like my ice cube. I love I those ice cubes. Okay. The, yeah, I love the ice cube too. We're gonna we're gonna do the orange on the rim again. Pop that in, and I got my cute little bar spoon. Make sure that we stir it all up because I love it over ice. And there you <laughs> have <laughs> the south of the border Martinez. Cheers. Yum. <laughs> I'm so jealous. How awesome is that? And then he, oh, and then he rubs it in with the. I know, with the well, little face. My wine is delicious, I, sir. So I'm sure it is. They all are, but you know. Mine it too. Is. But I love the face. The yeah, that was that was great. Our literary bartender, folks, you're getting a virtual <laughs> standing ovation in the chat room. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> Drinks and outstanding Cheers. book recommendations all in one. All in one. Yep. Cheers, Ron. We should yeah. actually and someday go back and do all of our drinks and just do a kind of a um, recap of it all. Well, people keep asking us on several occasions. People always ask when we're going to do a cocktail mocktail book. Love it. Or a recipe book of some sort. And I'm like, Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. You know, I think the favorite one I did was for Forest of Vanishing Stars. And yeah. it was uh, un the Under the Stars mocktail. And I have to look up what it was. But I think that one turned out the best of all the ones I've done. I don't remember the name of the one I did for Forest of Vanishing Stars. But I remember I made a test version but the night we went live, when I made it, I must have <laughs> did. I must have done something different because I remember taking a sip live, and I was like, "Woo!" It was super strong, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, whew, okay." <laughs> and a couple of a couple of sips in, you were like going, "Every word's the secret word." <laughs> I was like, "I'm not." gonna take anymore so if anybody made that drink and it was too strong i apologize but yeah. i still stand by it if it's made correctly and did we make a drink with all these blue sharks these blue gummy yes. sharks oh for you Mary know what Kate's that one was really release. cute for the newcomer yeah, yeah. i the like that one too that's tough that's fun. that was fun those little sharks would float that's oh, right. I times. spent a lot of time practicing getting my sharks to float. <laughs> There's a, that's a metaphor that's for something. Then. What that's a great metaphor for something, Brenda, but I don't know what. <laughs> getting my sharks to float. That's I feel funny, like though. we're sillier on a Friday. Like we typically do happy hours Thursday night. But I honestly feel like it's the end of the week and that one extra day, I think we might be a little sillier or maybe just me, but you know. Well, you know, I know. feel it. Okay, well, let's what's jump next? into these recommendations. Recommendations. Ron, would you like to start with a couple of recommendations for us since you've done your drink demo? Was I supposed to prepare some? <laughs> Don't play. Don't play uh -oh. with us. Today. All right. I'm going first. So I get to beat y'all to the punch. Oh. Last weekend, I had the most amazing time finishing Bright Lights Big Christmas. Yay. And I know that several other people have already read this, but I have to say, I felt like I was given a Christmas gift. The book transported me to Christmas in New York. I mean, this whole story about Carrie Tolliver and her brother and all the people they meet in the neighborhood. 
little boy Austin and his dad Patrick, who's a hottie and has wants to get together with uh, Carrie, our our thing, and just their whole family dynamic and just meeting all of those people in the neighborhood. And there's of course a big mystery with Heinz who comes along and helps Austin and Carrie draw some pictures and tell a story with uh, with pictures and drawings. And you can tell he's got a little art background. Nobody knows him. Nobody knows what's going on with him. And just all of the, the rivalries and the stories and the characters that we, we know that we're going to get from MKA, the, um, the funny, the humor that we're going to get from her. It's all there. Yeah. And I I loved it. But I have to say that one of the things that I, I got as an extra added thing was inspiration. There's so much in here about people following their dreams thinking about where they want to be in their life and, and doing what it takes to make it happen. So this was just this great, great takeaway inspirational um, part of the book. And I just didn't want it to end. And I Aww. hope we're going to get more from these. And there's a few characters I texted her and said, could we please get the backstory on these people? I get there's there are people in the book that you just want to know more about you want to know more about their stories what made them who they are how they get where they are and just just it's it's it, at the MKA brand but it's elevated I just reorder it everybody yes pre-order it it comes out September 26th and while MKA is a topic we want to go ahead and mention that her book Homemade Sin. It's her third. It's the third novel in the um, Callahan Garrity series. It's on sale. The ebook's on sale right now for $1.99. So pick it up. Pick it up. What a deal. Pick it up. <laughs> Less than a I bought it yesterday. And I love those sometimes because you know what? If I have the book and it's signed by the author already and I I yeah. don't really necessarily want to loan it to anybody or blah 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 blah. But I'll 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 grab those so I have it or yep. I can read it whenever I want without damaging the book. So I do that all the time. Like most of my signed books, I don't even really open. They're just like on my shelf. Yep. And I'll either get the book from the library or buy the ebook or listen to the audio or whatever. Yeah, in yep. the same way. That's a hint from Heloise. <laughs> That's funny. Brenda, well, what about uh, you? I was going to say, I'll go next, and I'm going to try to share my pick that I have finished reading, but I just love this. It's called The Lonely Hearts Book oh, Club by Lucy Gilmore. Great cover. Oh my gosh. I love the cover. And, oh, oh, I don't think I lost I thought I lost it, but no. It's there. Okay, you can still see the cover. Great. Uh -huh. Well, I you, you know how I am about the books about bookstores and libraries and um and book clubs. So this one ticks off two of those three boxes. It's Sloan Parker is a librarian who is, you know, underappreciated but loves her patrons. And she comes across this very curmudgeonly um grumpy fella in the library, and her heart just goes out to him. So she um tries to save him because he 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 doesn't stop in the library for a while so she's worried that he's sick so in the in the course of that they wind up with a very um very crazy cast of quirky characters who wind up um forming a book club and reading classics and bringing Arthur out of his um grumpy state and he reminds me so much of Arthur True Love that it, it was just so endearing, but it's a heartwarming story and I really enjoyed it. Yay. I like that. Yay. Well, Lisa, how about you? I'll start to talk about my book while I go ahead and try to, you know, I'm not always the, the tech savvy the tech one savvy. in some situations, but my book, my first book recommendation is The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. And I'm telling you guys, woo, this story is so good. I'm trying to share my screen. Let's see. Okay, here we go. It's about two friends. <clears throat> There's the cover. 
I and like the cover. Dunning yeah, cover. I do too. She writes a book. I'll tell you. She, she writes, writes a, a book. book. She writes a book. So this is about two friends, Emily and Chess. And they were really, really close. And they were college roommates. And they kind of went their separate ways. And um, Emily gets married. And Chess does too. But she has some issues. Or, or she almost gets married. She has a relationship. But they come back together to visit this villa where they're also both writers, which I love. And Emily is doing some research on a murder that happened at that villa. So they go on, they decide to spend the summer together there. And that's all I'm going to say. That's a good place to stop. All kind of things. So, Shenanigans funny. ensue. I've read it. And there's, oh, my. Like, if you start to go too far, you're giving things away. Yeah. That, that one, I mean. I will say that it was inspired by Fleetwood Mac, the Manson murders, and the infamous summer Percy and Mary Shelley spent with Lord Byron at the Lake Geneva Castle, which is the birthplace of Frankenstein. And, woo, funny. <laughs> I loved it. So hey. that book is already out. You can get it on Libby. You can get it at the library. You can pick up a copy. So that's a good one. That is a good one. Mm -hmm. You're muted. So <laughs> sorry. Um, my dogs are barking, but I guess they'll just be in the background as lovely music while Lisa <laughs> talks to us about our uh, uh, announcement for September. Ooh, well, for September, well, yeah, we've already announced our book club for September, and we'll remind you that later, right. but we do have a very special event coming up. It's the Zibby Books preview party that we will be hosting. It's on September 28th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we will have Emma Gray, who is the author of The Last Love Note, which is in stores November 7th. We will have Patty Lynn, who is the author of In Credits. And her book comes out on September 5th. And we will have Ms. Michelle Wildgen, who is the author of Wine People, which I know a lot of our members have already read and it is available now and it's great. So we are super excited about that. And then as if that's not cool enough, we're going to be doing some special giveaways. And Diana, the publicity manager that Brenda and I love, will be joining us towards the end of the show. And she's going to give us a real big peek behind the curtain of their books coming out through maybe April of next year, maybe a little further. Wow. I don't know. So we will get a nice sneak peek and it's going to be so fun. So mark your calendar for September 28th, 730. Yes. Going to be so Ooh. much fun. And it's going to be right there on the book club page as well. Yeah, I'm excited. Me too. I just am so, so looking forward to the, the kind no. of panel kind of discussion. Yeah. And then, oh, it's, and there'll be giveaways. We didn't mention that. There'll be some giveaways yeah. that night. Yeah. Look at you two go. Mm -mm -mm. PP and Jay on the move. <laughs> on the move. <laughs> wow. Lisa, I think... <laughs> oh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, I was going to, um, the <laughs> dogs. Oh, dear. They're excited about Zibby, too. <laughs> I was just going to mention October. Is that what you were about to say? Yes. I can pull well, up I the screen. Let you do the honors. Okay. So, our Drum October. Roll. Drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. I can't do I got that. It. In there. <laughs> Our October book club pick is hmm. I bet you a lot of you, a lot of you probably think it's a witchy book, but surprise, surprise, it is not. It is the followers by Brady Godfrey, and we are so excited. Yes, yes. So 
Yay! And that will take place on, I have to get back to it, sorry. October 16th, 7 p.m. She's That's right. amazing. She was here in Cleveland earlier with this year with um, Allison Hammert for the Comeback Summer. Oh. And I, instantly, oh, I'm, awesome. I make, I'm in love with both. They're, they're just Oh, amazing. my gosh. They're great. Yes. And I, I want to mention while we're talking about Brady, another $1.99 ebook deal. Her other book, The Imposters, is on sale as an ebook deal. I know it's on Amazon. I don't know if it's everywhere, but I bought that one today. So that's another good one, The Imposter, and you can grab it for $1.99. So. Yeah, um, and I so like Ron's tip about, because I do tend to be kind of hard on my books as I'm reading them. And I hate it now that I have so many signed copies. So I'm going to have to give that some more thought too to just go ahead and get an e-version as well. And then I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, can, that's what I, I do. My, I can drip my chicken grease on <laughs> people. Not your chicken grease. She's coming up with all these little metaphors tonight. Like I'm getting my sharks to float and now it's like dripping my chicken grease. Girl, all oh, your southern just came out. That was hella southern oh. right there. Now my you know, chicken uh, grease what, can drip on my book. <laughs> what can I say? But I, I can't even go um, on now. I'm laughing too hard. But I did, I did want to mention just real briefly too is. Uh, book club members, don't forget about our reading challenge. We are right smack in the middle of it. And just wanted to remind everybody that August is a book solely based on its cover that you can choose. And actually, Brady's would be a really good one, too, because that cover is awesome. Yeah. Dude. And speaking of awesomeness, we have our special guest ready to come in. And I believe you will find, find her very interesting. Ah. Uh. So welcome, Mary Kay. She needs no introduction. I know. <laughs> Just step right on in. Am I in? Mary Kay. Yes, you're, you're in. in. We can't but see your, you. Your camera's not on. Oh, hang on. Let me turn it on. I was trying to be incognito, but I guess that didn't work. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she is incognito. She did. She no, that's as much as The Yay. queen has arrived. <laughs> oh, I love this special guest. <laughs> well, we told you guest. you would. You knew who it Ron was. Ron was guessing and he was totally wrong. And then when you, so Ron's first recommendation tonight, Mary Kay, was your book. Aww, and he nice. knew that we were going to talk about it later. So he just jumped on it first. Oh, I said, I no said, if you let me go first, I'm going first. There you go. We were laughing because we were like, he has no idea. No, I had no idea. That's great. I love it. I can't see with these sunglasses. <laughs> love the hat. Oh, but, but you this look very Jackie. O. Hat. Thank you. Yeah, you look fabulous. <laughs> oh, thanks. I love an estate sale hat. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, it's great. We to are so you. excited. And we're super excited because you just announced your book tour and the big friends and fiction event. Yeah. So do you yeah. want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we are going to be in uh, a likely story in Maryland. Um, that's the bookstore and they're doing it uh, at, at the community college bookstore. I mean, the community college um, library space. Oh, and nice. Yeah, they can, people can find all the details and the uh, links to buy tickets to come and see us um, on um, Friends in Fiction on the on their website. They can find them on my MaryKayAndrews.com website. Um, and we, we're hoping to have a big crowd. We've got some fun stuff planned. Um, I just ordered some stuff from Amazon today. Ooh, I can't Ooh. wait. <laughs> you know, I love a prop. Yes, I do. Oh dear, what, am I going to have to wear a fascinator? Uh, I, uh, I could hook you up with one. Uh, no, that's okay. 
Lisa and I both happen to have fascinators. And why not? Oh, yeah. We for, do. Uh, for the last royal wedding, or was that for what was that for? Uh, that was for uh, the coronation we, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. So, so gonna, Mary Kay. Yeah. Oh, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that um, we finally, you know, we had some last minute scrambles. But we finally got everything lined up and I'm excited about it. All I have to do now is finish writing next summer's book. <laughs> that we all can't wait for. <laughs> oh, my um, goodness. I don't know how you do it, Mary Kay. But we are so excited about your stop in Maryland. I am, too. Are y'all going to try to come? Yeah. Ron's coming. I can't, I'm come. I can't come to Maryland. I am looking into it. <laughs> but I will be at. A couple of your other tour dates. Good. I know you said what Auburn, maybe. I think I might come to Auburn, yeah. and I'll yeah. definitely be at Atlanta. Great, yeah. Good. Good. Of Atlanta, when is that date? That is that. That's the kickoff. That Saturday, um, September twenty third. September twenty third. Yeah. And, um, it's at Huff Harrington Home, which is in Brookhaven, in Atlanta. It's a beautiful home store, and Eagle Eye Books is handling the book sales. You can buy tickets to that um again on my website or on uh, or on um foxtail i did I say foxtail i meant to say foxtail not eagle eye eagle eye is doing sales for the yeah. next day's event <laughs> yeah they have a special ornament right yeah yeah people yeah. can if you pre-order the book um from eagle eye again you can look on my facebook or whatever and you can see the link um you can order the book from eagle eye and if you pre-order, they have a limited number, but they have these adorable, I should have brought one upstairs with me. They're downstairs. Um, stained glass uh, Christmas tree ornament. Looks like the little, it looks oh, just- Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it looks just like spammy. Love spam. You know, oh. A little camper in, in uh, Bright Lights Big Christmas. And so, yeah, so you can get the book autographed and you can even get it personalized if you- um, if you uh, place the order, uh, you know, early enough. Um, fortunately, they are right around the corner from my house. So as soon as the books come in, I will be scooting over there and signing people's books and personalizing them for them. Yay. Nothing makes a better gift than a personalized holiday book by MKA. So exactly. check off that Christmas list and holiday list. Well, you yeah. know, what we've <laughs> What I found with um, the Santa suit and before that, um, the other Christmas books, Blue Christmas and, and um, um, what was the other one? Blue Christmas. Christmas Bliss? Maybe. Christmas Bliss. Yeah, Christmas Bliss. Duh. It's been so long. Um, people love to buy them as, you know, teacher gifts for the for the girls in your Mahjong club or your other teacher friends or. Um, yeah. Oh, it makes a nice little gift. It's For a sure. great yeah. And this one especially is going to be a great gift this year. It's such a great cover. And oh, okay. Uh, I already told them I texted you about two of the characters and I wanted <laughs> I want their backstory. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a mystery in Bright Lights Big Christmas. There's a mysterious older gentleman. His name is Heinz, and he's kind of crotchety and um cranky and uh he says exactly what he thinks he has no filter exactly. but um carrie the protagonist of the book um somehow manages to win him over and they um they start telling a story to this little boy who lives in the neighborhood and um and illustrating it together and nobody knows where Heinz is kind of a mystery man. Nobody knows where he lives or he just um, never tells much about himself. But by the end of the book, we, we find out about him and we find out about Carrie. And you know, I'm going to give you a happy ending. <laughs> love it. I love it. Especially, okay, especially in a Christmas it. book. Yeah. Spectacular one. I have to um, read this comment from the chat. Margie says, MKA, you need to include this character, your special guest outfit in one of your next books. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's a great one. Maybe yeah, I'll mystery Margie. woman. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll put her in. Maybe I'll put her in next summer's book. That's her Maybe. new cover. 
for the next yeah year. well you know um i wore this when we had hank Phillippe ryan on the show because the cover of her book um had a woman in a big broad brimmed black hat and um sunglasses yes fabulous the house guest i think it the was. house guest yeah anyway so i wore it when we had her on the show that was but fun this is a different scarf yeah well i think <laughs> that is fun. while we have mary Kay on the line we might as well go ahead and announce our november <laughs> book club pick what could it be which is, i can't imagine <laughs> Right? What a surprise! Oh my God, mine's upside down. <laughs> I like to Christmas. It's called Mary Kay Andrews backwards, <laughs> upside, and upside down. down. <laughs> I know. That's okay. It's Friday. Oh, it's Friday. Right. See, I'm a day late, but here I. <laughs> we need to screenshot this, y'all. Yeah, well, we'll oh, yes, yes. screenshot it. I'm sure Bubba did. She's great at yeah. screenshots. She's on duty. <laughs> oh, that's um, funny. I love the trailer for this one too. It's so cute. Yeah. It's so cute. Yeah. Uh, they do a great job with that. I was so excited when I saw it and um all the plans that we have finally came together. Um and so now all I have to do is uh get this next book. Kind of can you tell us anything you can about do it the next book? you can do it i can tell you something about it it's set at a very grand iconic southern hotel on the georgia coast um inspired by but not um the cloister which is at oh. on sea island and um things have been happening at uh, the name of the hotel is the saint the Saint Cecilia, but it's all, it's called the Saint locally. And um, the protagonist, Tracy, uh, is a, is a local. She's a homegirl. She grew up there, not much money. She worked at the hotel, like most of the locals do when they're teenagers, they get jobs at the Saint and she gets a job as a lifeguard and she and her best friend who are also townies get a job at the Saint uh, when they're 20 and that summer, she, Tracy, meets the owner's son and has a whirlwind romance and marries him. He's 10 years older. And Shannon, her best friend, who's also a lifeguard, has something else dramatic and traumatic happen. And so the two mm. best friends um, don't speak again for 20 some years. Wow. So. Wow. That's a little bit about it. There's a I know little, a little taste, just a little taste. There's an that old sounds mystery, so good. There's a new mystery. Um, there's a second chance of love at love. Um, all kinds of skullduggery. Duggery, I love Yay. that. Well, Yay. that sounds fascinating. <laughs> and Mary Kay, I know you can only stay with us a little short while, but would you mind sharing something you're reading right now? Yeah, I am reading, well, I'm reading Karen Slaughter's um, After That Night. Yeah, um, Karen Who, happens to have right here. Yeah, Karen. Well, that was my next pick, but <laughs> I love it. I'm reading that because I'm going to do an interview with Karen um, Sunday at her kickoff at Foxtail Books, Sunday at uh, Foxtail in Woodstock, Georgia. And, and I um, will see you there. Oh, good. Yeah. And there may still be We've some. Got a bunch of book club members coming in from that'll out of be, state yeah. and here. So, yeah, that'll be fun. So, uh, I'm going to interview Karen. God knows what will happen. <laughs> It'll be hilarious. <laughs> you never know. You never know what's going to happen with Karen. <laughs> no, you don't. It'll but be I'm hilarious. Reading, I'm reading that. And then I'm also reading the, um, the Connollys of, um, what county is it, Ron? Oh, uh, Carroll County? No, Down County? It might be, yeah. The Tracy Lang's book, right? Tracy Lang's book. She's going to be on the show, and I'm going to be hosting her. I so love I'm her. Switching, yeah, I'm switching between that book and um, 
and uh, Karen's book. And then I'm also, I've just finished reading um, The Longmire um, Defense, Craig Johnson. Um, Ron and I are Ooh. interviewing him for the podcast. I've um, got them all. Yeah. <laughs> um, hitting up the you go, Vanna. You go, Vanna. Uh, Tom and I binge watched Longmire um, on, uh, I guess it was Netflix. And the good thing about it was there were eight seasons of that show and it was really well done. So I got hooked on Longmire then. And so this is the latest um, Longmire saga. And so tell everybody a little bit about the podcast episode that we did that dropped. Oh, yeah, today. Our, our podcast episode, our interview with Julia Whalen, um, who wrote honestly, one of my favorite books this year. Thank you for listening. Um, I listen to the audio and Julia is a, is a, an award-winning audiobook narrator. And yes. this book she's is, amazing. It's just so good. It's a rom-com. It's a smart rom-com. It's got, it's smart. Yes. It's got heart. It's got uh, uh, a journey, an emotional journey um, that I just loved. And I loved it so much. I wrote her a, a mash note. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was so funny because um her her publisher is Harper Collins and I you know started my career at Harper Collins and still have lots of great friends there. So I emailed her editor at Harper and I said, I love this book. Would you let me would you share Julia's email address with me so that I could tell her how much I loved it? And her editor said, Well, I don't know, I'll have to check. <laughs> <laughs> So then I had, to, I had to, I had to call a friend, Ron and I's <laughs> mutual friend, Virginia Stanley, who's head of library sales at Harper. And Virginia had to tell her editor, uh, she's legit. She's okay. It's fine. She's fine. But I, anyway, I love well, I'm glad she vouched for you. The interview was so much fun. Wasn't it, Ron? It was so much fun. And um, the questions that you asked her were so good. And I just love the like she was so um she was so kind and she was so generous i think and she recorded with us right inside of her booth that she re reads all of her uh books from but i think That's there amazing. were parts too that she she kind of forgot that she was uh being recorded because i think she told us some things that she probably thought oh maybe i shouldn't have said that so you have to listen to the episode <laughs> you get to, you'll see yeah because she's got some exciting uh, some exciting stuff coming yeah. up for her but um yeah, if you if you love a good rom com, a good smart um, rom com, um, thank you for listening. Is really yeah. absolutely, and the audio which I listened to, the audio was was fabulous. And of course, you read that. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to mention my first recommendation when I did the villa. She is the audio yep. narrator for that book as well. So if you want to do the audio for that one. She's amazing. She's done some big ones, like Educated is one of the most famous audio books ever. Mm -hmm. That was hers. She's oh, just done awesome. I think it's like over 400 books. That she yeah. Including, she's, one, she's, including one of Patty's, we found out. Yeah. Yeah, she's at the top. Really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I was looking oh, at- Oh my the, goodness. Yeah, I was looking at the list of books um, that she's narrated and, and she narrated another of my all-time favorite rom-coms, which was uh, Evie Drake Starts Over. Yes. Which is, oh, yeah. Yes. Came out about five or six oh, years ago. God. I just loved that book. Yeah. We actually had- I um, loved it too. Yeah, we actually had the author on the show whose name right now I can't pull out of my- I think it's something Drake, Linda, Hol maybe? Linda Holmes, I think. Linda it? Holmes. It is Linda oh, Holmes. Linda Holmes. Yeah, she's on uh, NPR. She's a regular on NPR. Yep. All things considered, I think is what she's on. So definitely, yeah, I've got, definitely uh, putting that. I've got definitely I've got, putting that one on my TBR. Oh, excuse me, Mary Kay. I was just <laughs> saying I've got my I'm just stacked up with books. Um, books I want to read, books I am reading, um books that people have recommended that I want to read. Um I'm just like all it's a tough like life. All the, yeah, I'm just like all of our book club members. It's just, you know. Yeah. Um, there's just so much good stuff out there. It is. Don't yeah. you think it's like a renaissance of great books all of a sudden? It's, I, I do. I mean, we've always I got do. great books, but I feel like now there's so many. I and definitely, great covers. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, and we've had some such, we've had some terrific authors on the show. 
And we're going to have even more terrific authors coming up. Um, oh, also on my list of stuff I'm reading is um, um, who we're having on the show this week. Um, uh, is it Allie Carter? Who are we Allie having? Carter. Yeah. Allie Carter. Um, what's the name of that book? I'm well, like, that I don't know. <laughs> I'm like turning pages and turning books and and then um, <laughs> Tater got on the book and chewed up the cover and the edges of the, the, the Connolly. So um, oh. it's, it's still readable, but the cover is trash. He really <laughs> likes he really oh. likes a good juicy book cover. He does. He likes that is mine, so funny. Mine ate the Sweeney sisters. Oh no. <laughs> don't tell don't tell Leanne Dolan don't tell Leanne that we love Leanne and we love that book yep I love it too but I just was like no (laughs) but it happens oh well Tater also ate my first copy of uh, Christie's book that's right (laughs) the hardbacks fortunately I had the arc that you know that he didn't get a hold of so oh my goodness he couldn't have eaten the arc instead I, I don't, apparently the arc was not as tasty to him. It just wasn't apparently as good. Apparently not. Not as appetizing. Well, Mary Kay, was, it's been such a pleasure to have, oh, with thanks you for to having have me. us with you, have you with us here tonight. Thank you for spending part of your Friday night with us. Thanks, Brenda. We are yes. so excited about. <laughs> I am too. I'm holding it right side up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bright lights, big Christmas. Bright lights, big Christmas. Buy my book, damn it. To- Yes, yes, Love yes, it. yes. Love, damn it. And then join Take us for care. book club on November 20th. Yes, we'll see you all on November 20th. And we'll see you this coming Wednesday, too. That's right. Live. Yes. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Mary Kay. Bye. Great to see you. I know. I'll see you Sunday. Oh, oh you're yeah. going to have a blast. That was so much I'm, fun. I'm very jealous of that. I'm excited. Karen. I was like, Mary Kay and Karen Slaughter, I mean, they, they could just sit there and read a phone book for all I care. It's going to turn into something entertaining. But I so. guarantee you it won't because, it, oh my God, if you've read, I don't know, this This is Bob. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. This is so disturbing. So I disturbing. Bet. But so the- beautifully written, beautifully written. I kind of wanted to ask if you could read it alone, but I yes. figured the answer was no. <laughs> no, it's not disturbing in a like a, there's a killer coming to get you way. It's a it's a it's disturbing in the content of um of of the case that Will takes on and it's Will Trent and his now fiance gotcha. Sarah, the emergency room doctor, and his uh, partner this. Faith, and um this this starts out with Sarah in the emergency room where a woman comes in and she's um it been in a car accident and her heart stops working to try to save her and she tries to you know really goes the full mile but this young woman whispers something in her ear that not only um is oh, she's the only one who's heard it but it's something that ends up to be connected to something that happened to Sarah 15 years ago it's all about Ooh. how they pull things together to look in, but it's very, very emotional for all of them. So of course it is for the reader as well. And it's 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 great, Karen Slaughter. It's great, Karen. And you don't have to read any of the other books too. To, to uh, that's just what I was wondering because I haven't read the whole series, but I I bought two of the first book of the series because I'm gonna give one to my dad for his birthday because he loves the show i love the show too oh the show's great yeah show's it's great. great and it's filmed here I, there's it's so atlanta like everything it's about atlanta it's filmed in atlanta karen lives in atlanta yep. all the atlanta actors are on there so i just i love it i have several friends that are on the show so my dad loves the show so i'm giving it to him for his birthday spoiler alert I don't think he's watching right now, so that's good. <laughs> I was afraid the special guest was going to be too. my mother. <laughs> you have no idea how no. almost on you were. We were talking about getting a relative. Seriously? <laughs> oh. Uh, but we, yes. we figured MKA, is, you can't get better than that. So, yeah, you know, I, and I'm, I just feel so, I, I, 
like all those friends of I love everybody. I, I'm like I'm so appreciative of the Friends of Fiction book club and the community, but especially because I've gotten to spend so much time with the Fab Four and Meg. Yeah. And like, it, I feel like they're my siblings. Like we're all part of this Aww. little family, and it's really, really wonderful. Yeah, it's a Friends oh, of Fiction family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back to the back to the stuff agenda. Yes. Agenda. Yes, in fact, weird. in fact, before um, Mary Kay came on, we were talking a little bit about the reading challenge, and it's time for a giveaway, everybody. So get your fingers poised on your um, chat box because we are going to give away a copy of Mary Otis's Burst. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Look. Now, the question is for the giveaway. What is our reading challenge prompt for August? And Lisa first is going answer. To, to, to man it for the first answer. Wow, and while she's I, doing that, <laughs> the reading challenge am, is available to everybody on the book club page. We have a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It is Amber. Congratulations, Amber Boo. Congratulations, Amber. You got a Yay. book of bursts coming your way. And that is one of Brenda and I's recommendation for the reading challenge this month because the cover is like covers great. I've been hearing great things. So enjoy. About yeah, I have yeah, it's really good. So okay, yay. So Ron, you just shared Amber one. <clears throat> oh, what were you gonna say, Brenda? Oh, I was just gonna ask Amber to DM one of us with with her. Well, you probably have her address. Maybe we'll see. Maybe not. But Amber, DM us. <laughs> okay, go ahead, uh, Lisa. I'm sorry, Ron. You gave one of your recommendations. Do you want to give another one? I would love to. I've got, uh, and I I'll, like like Mary Kay. I get piles of books <laughs> that are over here so for our next happy hour i'll have a whole new slate but for now i'm going back just a little bit this book is called foster dade explores the cosmos and it's by nash Ooh. jake and it's a book that i read because it was a recommendation from our guest on a past podcast episode curtis sittenfeld and she's like who doesn't love a boarding room mystery Nobody doesn't love that book. She talked about it a little bit as one of her favorite books, and I was immediately writing it down and had to get it, and I had to read it. It's it's a little bit thicker book, but it's um, uh, Foster Date is this young man, a young teenager who ends up going to boarding school, and it's like, um, and it's he's trying wants to fit in. He doesn't have a lot of confidence, um, and he how oh, there's something happens where he gets in with the with the in crowd. And he's he has all these adventures. This book, though, is structured that at the beginning we realize that his story is being told by an unnamed narrator who's describing the story, but he's doing it through things like blog posts, playlists. Um, it, it's a um, pistolary, they call it, when they add all these different things, and a text message string, things like that. And so he's telling the story. What happened is, um, uh, Foster Day was in the school uh, for 18 months and suddenly he's expelled after a big scandal, things that happened. And they're only in high school, they're like 10th, 11th grade. And so he was only at the school for 18 months. And the person who's the narrator is the one who takes over his um, his his room at this at the boarding house in the school, 18, six months after he, this, he's left. And he's got to find out what happened and what's going on and what's the truth. And like, all of us, you know, we love to read those things and it helps us relive a lot of things in our own life. But what the, I think the point of the whole book is like, how do we tell our own stories? How do we tell the stories of others? And how do we want our stories told? Um, and as you, read, as you read the book, you get insight into all the characters and all the people that are on campus. And it's just, it's one of those things that you just sit down and you're absorbed and you're living through it. And, and just, I think it's a it's an, it's a debut, but it's um it's it's the start of a great writer. Wow. 
That sounds wonderful. Yay! So good. So good. Thanks, Curtis. Okay. Before we proceed with a few more recommendations to blow up your TV up, PBR Friday. Okay. Um, we want to finish out our announcements for our calendar. So, as we mentioned, our November pick is Bright Lights, Big Christmas, and that's on November 20th at 7 p.m. Also in November, a book club favorite, we will be doing our annual Friendsgiving on November 16th at 7.30 p.m. And we'll have another happy hour with a certain Ron Block hmm. and a special guest oh, on November 30th. Oh, is Cheyenne <laughs> Jackson coming? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right with right along with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Your and, and your high school be... English teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Matthew Mrs. Moore Cook, November thirtieth at seven thirty. <laughs> Mrs. Cook but... was the one that turned me on to really loving Shakespeare in tenth grade in high oh, school, good. and she's still around. <laughs> we love Miss Cook. Okay, and while I'm rolling along with announcements, I might as well go ahead and announce our December book club pick. Yes. Ooh, you guys are going to be super excited. Our December book club pick is Christmas Presents by Lisa Unger. And it will be on December 18th at 7 p.m. It's not your traditional holiday story. <laughs> and we are so excited. So what's this new? <laughs> It'll yes, be at least we are real excited though. Brenda will be cult jam that night with Lisa Lisa for those who get that reference. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. And for those who remember Dateline's voice, uh, what's his name? Keith Morrison. The question about the book is, will there be blood? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's too funny. I am going to do a quick recommendation, and then, Brenda, you can do one. I will be happy I to. I this one. I had you in mind, Brenda, when I picked this one. I'm going to step a little outside of the box. Ooh. I know Brenda loves the book Secret Garden, and I love graphic novels. So when I came across this gem called The Secret Garden on 81st Street, it's a Ooh. retelling of Secret Garden. And I don't know if you can see it good. Oh, there. Ooh. That's pretty good. Yeah. The graphics are amazing. It is such a good story. You can see some of the pictures oh yeah so, who's the artist for that the artist is amber padilla she's great i've seen oh, other graphic oh. novels and the author is ivy noel weir and it's the secret garden on 81st street it's super 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 cute so i love that it. is very cool go. It's yeah, funny. We actually have... a great idea for a few holiday gifts that I'm going to yeah. need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really, I really, really loved it. It's, it's in the juvenile section. I don't know what age range that is, but it's very. Um, well, if only we had it's very good. that worked in a library that could help you. I know. Huh. Who could that be? So I don't I know. Probably fourth to sixth grade. How about that? Okay, cool. There you go. So if you have a fourth to sixth right. grader and you're looking for a book, there it is. <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa. I'm going to share one now. And this one is coming out September 5th. And this could also be a cover pick, but I think it'll be out too late for um, for our reading challenge. But this is Susan Beckham Saranda. She's from South Carolina and uh, was an educator for probably 25 years, higher ed and high school. And this is called The Girl from the Red Rose Motel. And it kind of has a vibe, a breakfast club vibe. There's a, um, there's a girl who is homeless and she and uh, this uh, 
well-to-do senior in high school meet and they uh, in in school suspension by the way which is why there's kind of a breakfast club vibe, vibe. but it's it's just a really interesting story about privilege and poverty and relationships and the bonds between parents and children and I think it's going to be a good one she is actually the author who wrote I don't know if any of y'all read Bells for Eli but it's the same author. Oh. Wow. Very cool. All right. So that's, I'm going to stop sharing. That's my pick. Great. Woohoo. Ron, what about you? Did we go through all of your picks since we mentioned so many that were on your list? We never, <laughs> we never, we never get to never, that. Never. But, um, I have, um, I have this one who, the River We Remember oh. by William Ooh. Kent. He is an upcoming guest on the podcast, and I'm so excited to talk to nice. him about this. It is, if you've read anything by him, Ordinary Grace, This Tender Land, or any of it in his, his detective series. Um, and this is this is a standalone. It's not one of his series, but it's... um takes place in 1958 on Memorial Day in a place called Jewel, Minnesota. And as people are gathering to remember the people that have served in the military and kind of uh, honoring them, suddenly a body floats up in the river and it's half clothed and it's somebody who's been shot. And it's the person who's got the most power and the most money in the small Midwestern town. Uh, and so we meet the sheriff, who's Sheriff Brody Dern, and he himself is, it's 1958, remember, so he's been a decorated military uh, veteran, but he has a lot of mental and physical scars from the war that he has. And the person who the town suddenly turns on and thinks did it is someone named Noah Bluestone. It's actually a World War II veteran. Oh. And he's recently returned with a Japanese wife, returned to Jewel. Think about the time and the way that people thought about the Japanese and things. And you can see that there's a whole, there's a whole brouhaha a brew. And so it's all about the investigation into that. And you meet all these other characters in the town. Um, you, there's, a, there's a woman with a teenage son. There's... Um, Lots of lots of people who have a tragic history with the dead man too. Though. So all these secrets people are trying to not want to have come out. So it's a book that's beautifully written, beautifully written. And if you've read anything by Mr. Kruger before, you know that it's also a huge adoration of Midwest life. We we learn so much. So it's almost like the setting of the story is the character itself and all of these people. And by the time you get to the to the end, these are just People you want to like put in a great big hug and you want to take them with you. The it's characterization, um, it, it, it's, it's a mystery. It's really got some emotion to it, um, but gorgeously everything else he's written. And I cannot wait to talk to him about this. There you go. Yay. And it's out September 5th. Amazing. Oh, that sounds yes, fabulous. That's awesome. You know, yeah. You know, Ron, that's one of the things I like so much about reading is when you have that kind of um, development, well, character development, but geography, yes. you feel like you've been transported to that place. And that's just one of the best things about reading. Yeah. And, and this is a great yeah. example of it. And uh, it's just a triumph for him. Yeah. Um, and did, were were really you there quick. when we all met him oh. in Savannah? Weren't you all there yeah. when we met him in Savannah? They were there. It was <laughs> so charming and so it was so kind. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, in the chat, Mitzi said, "Brenda, can you repeat the title of the book you just re recommended?" And also, Ron, can you repeat the title of the book you just re recommended? Okay, go ahead, Brenda. Certainly, it's the girl with the. Uh, I'm sorry, the girl from the Red Rose Motel. Okay. Mine was The River We Remember. And when you mm -hmm. read this um, this book, the, it, one of the things that also comes, here I go again, I'm sorry. 
the, but the river we remember. So we all see the same river, right? We all see the river as it is to us, but it's very different for everybody who's looking at the river. And that's kind of the connection that he makes with it. It's like, it's just one of those things that grabs you and you just love it. And that's in really all of um, all of his books, really. The river is is an important yes. part, an yep. important theme for him. Yep, yep. So cool. we have reached the eight o'clock part. We are oh. now officially into the after show, which we won't keep you too much longer. Okay. But after show. Ron, do you want to give us one final recommendation before I give mine? Okay, I'll try to do this very quick. I have so many, but this is one that's just out, I think, this week. And um, this is going to be a future podcast. We've had some um, struggles connecting, but we, we all want to connect. We're going to, and we're going to. We have, I think we have a date in mind for later, but this is The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. I love the and cover. Every book I've ever read, of it, I mean, when you have literary heroes, she's one of them. I read, I started way back on her first book, and it had to be over 30 years ago, called Property Of. But she also um, she wrote At Risk, which was one of the bravest early novels about the AIDS crisis, families dealing with AIDS, way before people were really mm -hmm. talking. Brave. Wow. She's okay. Anyway, Invisible Hour. In the Invisible Hour, we meet Mia who is the product of a woman who brought her up in a community. And the community is really this horrible cult where books are, are absolutely forbidden and uh, contact with the outside world is not allowed. And we learn a little bit about her mom's backstory, Ivy. She's from a rich family. She ends up getting pregnant. They disown her. She meets a friend, blah, 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 blah. Gets pulled into this thing that she thinks is going to be exactly what she needs, but is everything she didn't need. But she brings her daughter up and she's very protective of her daughter. She um, tries to do things her, the right way. But she also kind of lets her daughter know that maybe she might want to visit because the, the people from the community, they go to the town and they sell their goods. So what things they make, things they've made, they sell it at like a farmer's market. And she encourages her daughter to go to the restroom at the library. And so Mia goes to the library and starts looking through books and discovers the Scarlet Letter. And oh. as she, uh, the Scarlet Letter, she opens it up and there's this inscription that doesn't make any sense to her that has her name in, in this copy of this book. Now she gets the book and she, she uh, then she starts stealing books from the library and the library is watching her. The library is letting her because she knows what the situation is. But she learns that stories are everything. That the world is your oyster through libraries and books and stories, but she reads everything. But as she's reading um, things, realizes that some things have happened in the community. She can no longer be there, so she escapes from there. But she, as she escapes, she realizes that the story of the Scarlet Letter is really the story of her mother, in a way that all the things that kind of reflects everything about her mother. She ends up falling and becomes an adult and goes, moves on away. But never, there's a connection back to the community that is frightening and doesn't go away. She ends up uh, falling in love with Nathaniel Hawthorne. And all, at some point, everything in the world just kind of crashes in. And I'm not giving anything away, I, honestly. But she ends up um, kind of at the end of her rope. And she realizes she thinks that there's nothing left for her going to end her life and she's got a copy of, of the scarlet letter with her suddenly she is awakens and she's in the time of scarlet letter and she meets wow. me and i'm going to kind of leave it there because Ooh. it is it's a beautifully written alice hoffman story everything the descriptions everything the love of books and reading and alice is um i think i wrote this down because I couldn't get over it. He wrote um, a line in there and she talks about her love of libraries and authors and books and things, but she says, a book doesn't live when it's written, it lives when it's read. Oh. Wow. Right, so this is why, you can tell why I love this book. I and mean, it's just, 
the love letter to everything, but it's such an amazing story. It's beautifully constructed and um, get out there and read it. Sorry, I took, a, wow. I took an hour and a half to do that. But no. I love the we, book so hey, much. We are here and we're in the after show. We can do what we want. Okay. Okay. Yes, because okay. I've, so, I've officially done blue, 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 blue. <laughs> yeah. for the blue, after blue. show. <laughs> So our last recommendation oh, of the night, oh no, that's okay, um, is a book that Brenda and I both, it's our combined recommendation here. And I'm gonna share my screen. It's called Rebecca Not Becky by Christine Platt and Catherine Wigington Green. And <clears throat> it's described as a whip smart compulsively readable novel about two upper class stay at home moms one is white and one is black and they're living in the perfect suburb that explores motherhood friendship and the true meaning of sisterhood amidst the backdrop of america's all too familiar racial reckoning this book tackles things going on within our world with grace and humor, and it's written by two viewpoints, and it comes out on December 5th. Love the cover, and I can't wait for Rebecca Not Becky. Christine Platt has been an idol of mine for a very long time, and I had the opportunity of meeting her about two weeks ago, hey. and she is completely just a powerhouse if you have the chance to look at her ted talk do it it helps you tells you how to live a life with less things and it's i mean she's great but i don't know brenda i feel like sharing a secret <gasps> another Did secret oh no should i share a secret you know what let's let's give another secret to ron why not we can we can tell him a secret just just run. Run. nobody else listen yeah. <laughs> yeah just, just me just me our friends. everybody else go la 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 yeah just the few of our friends that are here um with us still because we won't announce it on the page after this so if you don't watch it then you won't know until a later time later so, speaking of rebecca and becky we will be starting our 2024 year with Catherine Wigington Green and Christine Platt. They are our January pick with Rebecca Not Becky. And it will be on January 22nd at 7 p.m. We will have both authors here with us, and we are thrilled. So pick it up this yes, in we are. Yay. And we will it. officially announce it at our next happy hour, which is in a couple of months. So a few of you got the scoop. <laughs> yeah, you got the scoop. But I will say when we said when we said, Ron, nobody else listen, Amber in the chat said, la, 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 la. <laughs> uh, <laughs> too funny. OK, you want the skinny uh, I, last week when we did the takeover, I said, we didn't have a lot of things worked out yet, so I didn't have the guest list. Mm -hmm. I have so more. more of the guest list I can share. Ooh, I think we for should. The podcast. Okay. And and we we don't have exact dates with some of these yet because we're scheduling things, but they've all agreed to be on. So uh, Nina Simon is coming on, and you might not know that name, but she wow. wrote a book called Mother Daughter Murder Night. And it is going to be huge. It's going to be a huge, huge book. And she's agreed to come on and join us. And we'll talk about it. We'll preview the book and do that. Also, I already mentioned William Kent Kruger will be on. He's going to be great. Um, Ruth Watson is going to be on. And I don't know that people, not many people know her, but she's written this amazing book about a Black woman who's one of the first bankers. And you know how we love a historical fiction? That yeah, I like see stories that were never told and things. So I'm so excited to talk to her about Ashley Winstead. I don't know if you've read anything by Ashley, but she's going to be a guest on there. Ooh. Nita Prose. 
Nice. Yeah, Nita Pros will be joining us down the road. Oh, uh, yay. And this is one That's that, like, name. having been a reader for a long time, I have heard this name for years and years and years, and finally going to get to meet Aaron Kingsbury. Wow. Ooh. Right? Right? It's going to be, uh, that's going to be. She's got some hallmark behind her. You just have a lot <laughs> I was looking at the list of the books she's written, like, oh my God. Ooh. Oh, I know God. lots of books. That's amazing. And the last name I'll share with you at this because we're we're there. Uh, kind of is, um, it, and some of these are going to be later in the fall into maybe the winter. But Ashalemi. I don't know if you nice. read Ashalemi before, but in, this is uh, her second book, I think, and it's going to be. So wow! That's what I have. That's an ama amazing. as amazing a lineup as the fall for friends in fiction. I mean, it's oh, awesome. Well, there's so many authors out there, and and, and some are some are, um, you know, some are better for the live show, some are better for the podcast or scheduling, or there's a lot of factors that come into it. But like, people want to be on the podcast. I love it that the people are going. Can I be on your podcast? Well, yes, you can. But of course, <laughs> we're still like in cloud nine over the Susanna Hoff. Meg and I are still like humming all the songs and going over what we talked about. Well, I hope people have listened. It's amazing. To Just yeah. And the Julia Whalen one is so great. Oh my God. So, I love I'm her. literally looking forward to that one. So backtrack really quick, Ron. So is that what you really say? Well, of course you can. Of course what? <laughs> of course you can. No. <laughs> That it's, never up. it's never up to just me we we uh we do it collectively so we come up with names and um meg is so amazing meg meg is the workhorse behind yeah. a lot of this but everybody really is and we all like kind of like, i have a couple i'm yeah, still holding out hope that. for that are coming up and i i hope that they work out because people are going to be really happy but yeah no it's collective we all decide we all think and depends on when the books are coming out there's so many things. Yeah. Of course, it, the, there's people you just kind of go, probably shouldn't do this live, at, should I? <laughs> Our calendar is full. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we don't highlight people who wrote pamphlets. <laughs> On <that> note, <laughs> I think it's Wrap it up because the drinks are kicking in, and woo, it's Friday. We don't have to work tomorrow. It's so well, I do. We but... can be here all night, but we didn't even we have a secret. Don't want a secret. We didn't need a secret word. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we didn't need a secret word. Okay, you want to wrap us up, Brenda? Do it. We okay. A lot, so. Okay, so I'm going to try to quickly wrap us up with everything that we talked about. And we will post it on the book club page tomorrow. So don't fret if you don't get it down. But we're just so excited about it all. Of course, Monday we have, um, August 21st, we have Christy Harvey talking about the Summer of Songbirds. I love that book. And so in September, I did too. It was just amazing. September, we have Yours Truly by Abby Oh, yes. And oh, where's mine? There's mine. Abby Jimenez. Yeah, yours truly. And I forgot to put it out. <laughs> oh, I have a, um, hold on. Uh, I thought I did. Sorry. Oh, yes. Hold on. Sorry. There we go. There we have is. Abby Jimenez. I don't have the graphics for the rest of them, but I will run through them real quick. Um, then September 28th, we have the Zibby Books Preview Party with those fabulous three authors that we talked about earlier. October 16th, The Followers by Brady Godfrey, also a good candidate for that reading challenge for this month. We have Friendsgiving on November 16th at 7.30 p.m. And on November 20th, we kick off our Christmas with Bright Lights Big Christmas by Mary Kay Andrews. Here we go. And then our next happy hour, November 30th at 7.30 with Mr. Ron. And then if December I'm invited 18th. Back. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. 
And then December 18th, we have Christmas presents by Lisa Unger at 7 p.m. So I know that was a lot, but we wanted to do just a quick recap. We thank everybody so much for tuning in tonight for our book recommendations yeah. and silliness. Silliness and, we and want shenanigans. To, and shenanigans. And I secrets. As a reminder, Secrets. we talked about August reading challenge being the cover, but next month for September, the reading challenge is a retelling of a Jane Austen book. So oh, that's I right. know Anissa will post some recommendations if you want to jump ahead on that. Um, I would strongly suggest to check out Sonali Dev and her backlist. She has a couple that would fit there. And Ooh, and Ron's reaching. For, oh, I thought he was. I thought I had it one. here. No, a good one for the Jane Austen is the um, Susanna Hoff's book, This Bird Has Flown. Oh. Is if you listen to the interview, you say that uh, she tells you that Jane Austen was a big influence on her writing and her storytelling. Oh. So. There you go. Now you have another reason to read her book. <laughs> and listen to the podcast. I know. Cheers to a wonderful night. Yes. Thank you so much, everybody. Cheers. Thanks for joining Thank us. You, PB and Have Jay a great weekend. For putting up with me. <laughs> for putting up with all of us. PB and J and Ron out. Out. Bye-bye. Good, Good night. night. Good night.